Two, one. What's up, everybody? I go by the name of Young Jay, and today we have the lovely Ruby Renegade. And this is a very, very special uh, episode of Peer Pressure Podcast, where we uh, are going to interview my, my my one of my mentors. Uh, a successful entrepreneur, a producer. Uh, you know, he's been involved from the early development of TI's Grand Hustle label. He's he's been in the early development of Platinum Artist, uh, Russ Russ's career. He even left a footprint in the Asian hip hop community with viral songs like Loyalty with Sky High Lab. And now he's an international producer, man, working with artists from all over the globe. Most most importantly, once again, man, one of the my one of my closest friends and a mentor to myself. He goes by the name of Pizza Palace. What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Uh, feeling good, bro. After that intro, I feel amazing, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if I missed anything, for the people to get a little more familiar familiar with you, what are some things that they might recognize that you've been involved with? Man, uh, there's probably like a few things. Um, I mean, there's an artist uh, out in the Philippines right now for any of the Filipino people out there, uh, Cookies. And he is mm. killing it right now. Like he is Hell yeah. like, um, and if you're not familiar with him, definitely check him out as cookies with a dollar sign at the end. Um, amazing performer. And more importantly, an amazing person too. Actually reminds me a lot of you guys. Like you guys have such a good energy. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, like, uh, so yeah. And actually a few others. Uh, <laughs> we actually have a lot planned this year in terms of uh, more names you guys might recognize, but uh we won't reveal it here. It makes it more fun when it's a surprise. Hey, when this um, episode draws, Butter is going to be on all streaming platforms. Fire song, by the way. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just let you kind of just tell us about the story of how it came together. Actually, who's on it? And also, um, how did you guys all link up to make the song? Yeah, for sure. So, um, so I think Butter basically came about where... Like the whole idea is just to kind of get like a dream list of artists, right? Like artists who are just really great at the craft and really care about it. So, um, and this is actually something me and Cookies have talked about for a while about doing like a, and you actually had brought up the idea too. It's just kind of almost doing like, uh, like Airbnb type vibes where we get like oh. a whole bunch of writers together, you know? Yeah. And then like, we just knock out music, create content, like have a good time at the same time. Like, so like people who are just a cool vibe and just like to work on music and content. So, um, so we did that. We did exactly that, you know, so we came out, uh, to the West coast. Um, I think we started in LA, um, ended down in, uh, San Diego and, uh, <laughs> so actually, okay. So I'll start with the artists on the song and all that stuff. So like it, it's already out now. So people know it's going to be cookies, uh, heartbreaker, uh J Wolf and Foreign Logic. And so <laughs> so how the song actually came about was I think we were driving from LA to San Diego and like we were getting food for the Airbnb at the time. But I think during the time we went it was hella hot, like just hotter than it normally is out there. So, you know, there's not really a lot of air conditioning out in San Diego, that sort of thing, right? So, while we were taking the groceries, the stick of butter had melted on someone's leg. <laughs> And I forget who it was. I wish I could remember. But they're like, damn, I feel like butter. Fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's no. so like, smooth. Ah, like, that's, um, and then, so then later we, uh, Hart had booked uh, some time at, uh, uh, oh man, they're going to kill me for forgetting the name of the studio. I wanted to shout them out. Um, SD, uh, fuck. Oh, I'm going to edit it uh, in. Yeah. I'm going to edit it in. Sound right. Is it sound uh, sound lounge? Uh, say that again one more time. Is it Sound Lounge? Sound, sound lounge? lounge, yes. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Shelly and all of them, they like mm -hmm. show so much love for real. Like it's an amazing studio. So if you're out in San Diego, definitely go um, over there to record the people there. Fire people. So, um, so yeah, we go we go out there to record and like so we play we play the instrumental at the time, right? And so everyone's just writing, writing, writing. And I'm looking over at uh, Cookies, and he's just giggling to himself. <laughs> he's just like laughing his ass off. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is so funny? Like, what's up? You know? And he's like, he's like, hmm, hmm, damn, I feel like butter. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, bro, that's the hook. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's like, what? And he started giggling. He's like, for real? And he's like, uh. like, you know, I'm like, bro, like, we got to record that right now. So he got into the, uh, 
the booth, he started recording it. And then like, you could instantly tell like everyone was responding to it, right? They're like, yo, that's it. And then after that, I think Hart was like, yo, I got something. He, you could just tell he was just, you know, and then everyone just felt like, you know, and then, and then the song came about that way. So. That's um, amazing. I feel like it's great that it came from just anything that comes from that feel good place, especially <laughs> I've noticed with any of the creative things is if I'm giggling to myself, it's gonna work. Like there's no way around it. That is such a fun story. And like, um, this is uh, I, actually going off what you're saying. I, I, this is kind of like a little producer trick I would recommend to anyone out there who is a producer um, or just content creator. If you're an artist, anything is like, think about also the vibe that you create outside of mm -hmm. the creation space, right? Cause it's like, there has to be a comfortability of people. There has to be a comfortability of environment. How do we set that? How do we create that energy where people just feel comfortable mm -hmm. to be creative? So uh, it's a, it's an art form in that too. So it's like, you know, there's, there's a reason why we have the Airbnb. There's a reason why we want to make sure there's food. Just people feel comfortable. They're just vibing out and we happen to be making content at the same time. So. So you, so yeah, you mentioned I, the uh, writer's camps. Uh, this is something that um, I was a part of as well. And I just wanted to know, like, uh, what were some of the challenges of getting, I know when there's a lot of people involved and everyone's creative and then, um, you know, it, it might be maybe a bump head here, maybe like uh, this guy wants to be on the song, but he doesn't fit that song. What were some challenges that you guys came about and how did you overcome it? Uh, yeah, for sure. So I'll talk about typical challenges that come with those type of scenarios and then like kind of the logistics and making sure that, hey, like we can kind of shape it in a way that um, is comfortable for people. So I think number one is like uh, having, giving people time to like hang out with each other and understand each other first, because it's like, if people are collabing, like um, it does help to kind of understand each other's energy, right? Cause then we can kind of play off of that. And, and everyone, and, and then from my perspective too, I'm also looking at each artist and like understanding their writing process, right? Some people, they just like to write, right? Other people like to, to freestyle and punch in every few bars. Some people get motivated with competition. Other people get motivated off vibe. Like, so it's like understanding all those kind of dynamics. And then it's also my job as a producer to, to do my best to kind of create that environment around each person or create those uh, things around that person to, uh, to give them that. So, um, so yeah, I think the challenge is, is like everyone is unique. Like there, if you talk to any person who's written a hit song or anyone who has some level of talent in terms of making music, you're going to hear, hear a thousand different ways of their writing process. Um, actually, this is a great plug for a series I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with where we interview different writers and share the writing process. It's an unnamed thing. It actually, it's the first time I'm talking about it on a platform, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be, uh, coming out. And, uh, where we, uh, Jay, I definitely want you on that. Cause I know you got the, um, you know, you got some bars, bro. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, <laughs> definitely, I, I know, like, you know, we don't want to share too much of the sauce, but at least enough so they can understand that there is a craft mm -hmm. behind it. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, so, okay, here's a perfect example, right? Like Cookie's amazing songwriter, amazing like uh, hook writer, right? <clears throat> With that being said, um, what a lot of people I think is surprised about, but also I think he gets a lot of talent from is he actually grew up uh, playing drums first. Like he was, a, he's actually a, a drummer. So when he thinks about like stuff, he thinks about it from a percussion standpoint first, then puts in the words. So when you think about his wordplay and the catchiness, he's actually thinking about the cadence. And then that's what's giving it the, the viral hits and the viral feeling because he's thinking about um, Bonnie, uh, right? how it sticks in people's minds, right? And so like, uh, and even think about the different ways you can hit the drum, right? You could hit, hit staccato, you could kind of have a more dull thing. You want to think about the... Um, the volume of how loud it is or how soft it is. He's thinking about all these things as a drummer when he's performing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. And he's also used to being in a band, right? So when you're playing, you're kind of looking at the people around you, looking to get the feedback to make sure you're in sync with everyone. And that's what makes him amazing as a writer, because as he's just kind of freestyling, figuring things out, his, if you look at him, his eyes are looking at the other people. To, to, to get that feedback. And as soon as he sit, sees someone head nod, 
he repeats that phrase because he knows he has something, right? Mm -hmm. And then if he starts seeing some more smiles, he's like, okay, cool. Now I got two bars. He starts seeing more smiles. Oh, I got three, four. So -hmm. that's his process. The thing is, is that I always try to like at least sit next to him or like be in the booth with him to just kind of like get at least some type of visual Mm -hmm. feedback, right? Or I try to encourage people around to give him that. Um, Is that hard on you as a producer? mm -hmm. uh, Because these are for your projects and then, you gotta kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, cater to everyone's different thoughts. And like, I get in the booth, I write in there. You know, like, is it is it a challenge on you as the producer because you're pretty much the the center and you kind of have to cater to each person? Ah, uh, that's a good question. You know, what's interesting is like, as a producer, okay, yeah, like the beat. That's what all the artists are kind of centering around. At the same time, I never want to get in the way of their creative process. So I try not to center myself and I try to make sure they feel like they're the center, like as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like the way I see it is like, okay, for example, like I've had opportunities to um, kind of be in a few photo shoots for like my friends, clothing labels and be a part of fashion week and that sort of thing. Right. So when I'm wearing their clothes, I never think about it as me. It's like they've given me an opportunity for me to be a blank canvas to demonstrate their creative work. Right. So it's like, yeah, like when I'm making the beat, I have to make sure it's fire. But also at the same time, I have to make sure I'm making them feel like it's a comfortable canvas for them to express how they want. Because if I start like it's, it's a fine balance. Right. Because if I start, get, I, I could give the creative direction. Right. And, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of times I will. But if I start being too controlling with the creative direction right now, mm-hmm. it starts feeling like I can't even be myself, bro. Like I can't, right. I feel so like, ah, like, is it okay to do this? Is it okay to do that? And then that just starts messing up the vibe. Right. So, yeah. um, like the vibe will guide, like that's something. <laughs> that <is laughs> Ooh, like, okay. uh, I like that. We, we say that a lot. So, um, uh, so yeah, to answer your question, like I want to make sure, uh, as much as possible, the artist mm-hmm. feels centered, you know, in, in, yeah, I've definitely noticed you take care in in like observing everybody and understanding what all these artists need to bring out the creativity in them. So I think that's like that's just a big part of it too is not even about centering on yourself, but you are carrying a lot of information and really making sure that everybody feels that, you know. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank, yeah. thank you for noticing that. I appreciate that. Um <laughs> And, and, and yeah, like I, I would actually say that's like a um, like for any creative mm-hmm. collaborators, I think it's super helpful because like le- like it also helps me like in the times that I do want to share feedback or give feedback, they understand that I did take the time to listen. I did take the time to understand the other person and hey, what do you want to speak about? What do you want to talk about? What sh- what kind of music do you mm-hmm. even like? Right. And, and that's also what I do when I present mm-hmm. beats to people. Right. Because. Um, I don't want to just be like forcing things down them. Like a good friend listens and then based off of that, Mm -hmm. they kind of share. Right. So I also, I I think about it just like a friendship. It's like, if if we're going to collaborate, I'm going to listen to what your goals are word. Okay, cool. That's where some of my goals overlap too. Okay, cool. I think this is where something we could kind of work together with. Um, so yeah. So to answer your question, it's uh, very much a part of the uh, process to enable, um, uh, greater chances of something good coming yeah, out of sessions. for sure. Um, you know, in the age of how beats are kind of um, marketed nowadays, if you go on YouTube, you're going to look at Lil Uzi Vert type beat, um, mm-hmm. so-and-so artist type beat, you know? When you're in your process of creating beats, are you thinking, are you keeping that in mind or you're just kind of like, hey, today I'm feeling this, oh, I heard these drums. Like, what is the process What when you start the actual instrumental? Oh man, that's so fun. Okay, because there's so many different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Your favorite way, your favorite way, or like, <laughs> just like one of your way. most, uh, maybe something that's the most common, you know, like my process yeah. is always like uh, mumbling the cadence, mumbling the flow, the melody, and then I'll put words to it. You know, that's kind of been, that's kind of been my process. Uh, Sometimes I'll kind of get out of that, yeah, but, yeah. but like like what producing, that's what I always kind of like wondered. Like, do you just go like, oh shit, you heard these? This car drive by and they made this sound. It reminds you of another sound, or maybe like maybe some thumps on the street. You're like, oh shit, that reminds me of these kicks, these drums. What I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm kind of yeah. like uh, excited about it to, to hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I actually, no. You know what? I, I got a I got a good answer for this. So um, I think it goes in two phases. So number one, 
first, we just have to live life. Like we have to have enough life to live, to have some sort of like perspective and voice. Right. Like, and I think that's one of the toughest things about being a creative. I mean, this is after having all the technical skill sets, right? Like you got to understand how to, um, uh, the composition, right? Music theory, all that stuff. And then you have to understand sound design, right? How like synthesizers work, how do you filter them, the reverb, like all that stuff, right? Mixing and mastering, you know, you have to understand the technical elements. How do I work with Ableton? What are stems? Like, how do I get my vocal chain to work? How do I process? Like, there's all these kind of technical things, the hotkeys, so you can stay in front of the schedule, right? Okay. Um, uh, mixing, mastering, and yeah, I don't know if I said that yet, but mixing and mastering, if I didn't say that, you know? So like all those things, you have to kind of understand the technical aspects. Once you have that, that doesn't even make you like a a, a good music producer. It, you, you're just technically talented. Now you have to kind of have some sort of creative stance. So you have to develop a sense of taste, right? Like you have to kind of understand, oh, like when I want to speak to this audience or this crowd, they tend to gravitate towards these sounds and these feelings and this emotion in this community, right? When I'm interacting with this community, these are the stories they want to tell. And these are the sounds that are associated with those emotions. How can I kind of pull that out, right? So then that's the, the creative understanding of communities and the people around us, right? Once there's kind of that understanding, now it's just about creative direction. So like for me, I'm thinking, who do I want to speak to? Like, it's literally like giving a speech, like the best speech speakers they think about the audience that they're speaking to and they're like oh these people have these experiences let's kind of build towards them so i'll think of that creative direction first and then i'll fit in like of the 50 tools that we've collected over the years these are the seven that kind of <laughs> seven that fit in <laughs> so, um and then uh and then and then just go from there so okay. so that's that's the creative direction right we have the creative direction after I set the creative direction, now I can have all the freedom to experiment with whatever I want, with anything, as long as it fits in the creative direction. And I think that's the trickiest part with a lot of uh, beat makers or producers, right? Because they're just trying all these, oh, this sounds sound cool. And oh, this beat sounds cool. And, oh, I could remix it like this. And oh, man, I just learned how to side chain or all this shit, right? And they just throw everything at it. And then all of a sudden, it's just like somewhere else, right? Like, Throw everything at it, but you have to filter it all out to make sure it just fits that creative direction. There's a, a sense of focus. Um, so that, that's the creative direction part. And then from the technical side, at least for me, I want people to like bounce their heads or at least groove to it. So I always think about rhythm first and then I start. But then I, I love melodies. Like I love kind of like the the um, the push and pull feeling when you kind of go through like a chord progression. Like I love just kind of playing around with. Uh, emotions like that. So, um, it's my process. <laughs> yeah. I try to condense it, you know, but there, there's, there's yeah. a few more things, but that's the condensed version. Yeah. Right. So once again, that's a lot, just carrying so much knowledge. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Like, um, like honestly, I think what's so special about music is, um, to me, it like, you know how they always say like, ah, magic doesn't exist, you know, on earth. Like mm -hmm. to me, in a lot of ways, music does feel like magic because it's literally, it's so, it's literally, if you think about it, it's just the air shaking around you. And if you just play music in a room, it changes the entire vibe of a room. For and sure. it literally makes everyone's heartbeat sync together at the same heart rate or similar heart rates. It'll speed it up or slow it down. Mm -hmm. There's a hormonal response with everyone in the room. You can get everyone on the same wavelength of the same feeling. And then because of that, now people are able to talk with each other a little bit better because now they're emotionally, literally on the same wavelength. So right. like in a lot of ways, it's magical because it, it's it, like you ever see like the force fields when you push it out into people or, or whatever yeah. and things like that. Like music is one of those things where you don't even have to see it. You just mm -hmm. feel it, you know? Right. And um, I mean, not only that, together. you can it'll even bring you back to a place where right? you ever hear, hear a song and you're just like, wow, that's like, that brings me back to exactly this moment in my life with this person, this smell sometimes too, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it definitely yeah. is very important to a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Thousand percent. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm sure you've seen it while you're on stage, like you're on stage and then you see like people just, everyone just vibing 
on the same wavelength to the same song and you can yeah. tell that they all want to just share the energy together to create this experience it's it's very like special very rare you know? yeah because sometimes I'm, in, I'm like in the feeling and then also kind of i'll snap out of it and just see like everyone just staring at me i'm like oh shit all right get back in like you know <laughs> yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Right. Like, and then you can like because you can snap in and out of the the, the trance you know mm. what i'm saying but as far as like on, on your type of beats like uh what's your process in choosing artists or do you kind of just um you know throw it out into the universe collect verses and then maybe oh this one goes for this one you know like do, or do you kind of cater exactly to a specific artist when you're making a beat uh no this is such a good question um the way i see any like musician is like every musician's like a museum right so you're a curator so like, have you ever been to like a museum and it's hella whack? You like walk and you're like, bro, like they have like nothing here. This is bullshit. That's <laughs> bullshit. You walk in, you're like, yeah. damn, I want my $15 back or whatever you spent on the mm-hmm. ticket. Right. <clears throat> and then you go to other museums, you're like, whoa, amazing. Like they had a whole story they were telling and all this stuff. Right. So again, I think it just comes back to the creative direction of whatever story and concept that like, like, for, like for me, like if I'm doing my own pizza palace brand, there's certain narratives and ideas that like I would like to support. And through that, I'll kind of curate and reach out to people who might kind of fit that energy. Right. Versus like, if I'm working on like, for example, like your project, you know, or a Ruby, if you ever decide to like put out an album, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be like, Hey, what do you want to speak about? Right. I'm going to curate into, you know, like, like, uh, like uh people you so might like, be able I, to produce something for ruby though i've <laughs> <laughs> ever since i added her on twitter the videos i've been seeing they need the instrumental i do i do yo, like, i mean yo. it's not it's not, it's not that far on them but i could always use some uh, you know what you know maybe like um yeah we just gotta figure out what the genre is what audience we want to speak mm. to and then figure out like what that sound is for that. <laughs> yeah because like for example right if, I we mean, know the demographic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. right? But then outside of that, I do look at um, kind of uh, business aspects too because uh, like I've been in situations before where like I've gotten artist books for like big shows, got them appearances with like really big names and then I'm like, bro, where, <laughs> where are you? It's like 30 minutes later after, you know, the call time, I'm like, bro, so, right. so what's up, man? Like, you know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden I'm looking crazy because I'm yeah. making a promise on behalf of another person. So like, there's a lot of, uh, I, I do look at those traits. Like, wh- like one of the things I used to do was like, if I would book a session with a completely brand new artist who wasn't a referral or things like that, I would purposely book a session at like 6 a.m. just to see if they show mm. up. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. But, so if they promise, right? So like, if they're like, it's one thing they're like, bro, I can't get up at 6 a.m., blah, 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 and this and that, yeah. you know? And I respect that. Hey, you're upfront and you're honest. Right? I'm not going to bully anyone into like, bro, 6 a.m. Yeah. only, unless there's a good reason, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if they promise 6 a.m., 7 a.m., they don't show up, I'm like, ah, okay. Like, this was just the beginning. So like, I'd rather find that out early and then like lose a little bit of time and money at a smaller scale than like when we get all the third parties, the distributors, the booking agent, like all these like, people coming together and then all of a sudden i'm looking like the crazy one now everyone like lost money it's like people have to understand like at the highest levels bigger than just one person it's like we're all working collectively to create an experience for people right and everyone has a vested interest Mm -hmm. so um i really do look i I look at that a lot actually you know so that was actually my next question where i was about to ask like who wouldn't you work with so I'm just assuming like lazy, untrustworthy people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That for sure. Yeah, that for sure. And, and again, I think the viable guide, right, is um, like there's there's definitely um, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this too. Like when you're in a room and then like like a few people walk in and you can kind of tell like everything is about them and and it's like just the energy's off, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it's like when that person enters any creative space, it also it doesn't just hurt them. It hurts everyone in the room because now they're a little bit less comfortable to be creative, mm-hmm. right? If someone's so judgy, right? It's okay to give constructive feedback, but if it's given in a way where like, you know, it's like, like not even constructive, like they don't need to be in that room. Like it's, it's already so uh, uh, tricky to make good songs because you have to have a lot of technical knowledge. You have to have the freedom of time. You have to have like something to talk about, like all these things. The last thing we're going to do is allow a person to kind of mess up that energy, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. like to me, vibe is very important and just kind of understanding because 
Like there's like this very intimate, right? Like sometimes we're like when we're writing songs, we kind of look silly. There's definitely been times where I'm just like, I'm not a singer, right? But I'm like humming a melody and stuff. Like someone would be like, oh, get, get the fuck out of here. You know, like it's like, cause I'm not a singer, but like there's actually a melody in there we're trying to figure out. 90% right. of the time is not gonna sound good. It's only usually that last 10%, right? So mm -hmm. you have like people have to understand that and have the um, thoughtfulness. You get what I'm saying? So. So, so um, to sum all that up, what would you yeah. say three to five things that would make you not want to work with an artist? Uh, number one, bad energy, like bad energy. for sure, right? Uh, number two, uh, an unwillingness to learn, like mm. you get what I'm saying? Because this industry, everything's constantly changing, right? Like, right. Yeah. Number three, like you have to care about the craft more than the clout mm. a lot. Like this is a, like, there's so many people in this industry where like people just love the clout so much. And, and it's like, they'll do anything to get the clout. And you, you know, we've all run yeah. into these yeah. people, right? Yeah. So it's like, those people tend to fade out or they tend to do funny things. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But it's like, if you love, if you love the process and the, you love the, your craft more than the clout, those people mm -hmm. tend to do great because because the clout comes from the crowd, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. it's like the people who just chase the money and, and don't care about doing a good job. I'm like, oh, the money comes from doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Like, right. you got to do a good job and then the money comes, right? So, um, so yeah, I, I look for that for sure. Um, and then a bonus one. <laughs> bonus. What about... What about like, uh, you know, like unhygienic people, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, man, the studio is only this big, bro. I, I, I've been through the dirt, bro. So like, I definitely know I was that person. So if they if they <laughs> didn't allow me, I would not be here, bro. So like, I, I, I give other people a shot. Like, I understand people go through hard times, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So right. like, I'll understand. Now, if this person shows up like this for four weeks in a row, now that's a problem. You get what I'm saying? Like, you, don't, you have no self-awareness and that's an issue. Mm -hmm. If you smell that, like, we, fine with that. Right, <laughs> four, we need self-awareness yeah self-awareness that's a good one yeah. for sure yeah. okay so just like this be getting on a little bit more of a um personal side um how was your time in the philippines man like you went to you were on tour for about uh what was it six weeks yeah a little under six weeks so i was there for about 36 days so yeah, oh, wow. 30, it was actually supposed to be longer it got extended at the end but uh, um, I had some projects here that I had to um, come back to. So any, um, oh. go ahead. Go <laughs> it, ahead. It was amazing. Man. Number one, shout out to um, Big Kuya, Mike Swift. Like he is, bro. Like oh, he yeah. is like triple OG status. Like he's just like that guy. Like mm -hmm. um, it's very rare to like be like. Okay, so like. I'm going off a tangent. I'll, I'll bring it back to the question, but like, <laughs> um, I feel this is like your time, man. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. You know? This is about you. Bro. I'm, just, I'm just trying to be thoughtful. Make sure it's like uh, uh, people understand. I'm like uh, genuinely trying to answer the question too. You know, so, um, but like with, uh, like I feel like in any industry, it's already hard to meet people who have put in the time, built things, and all this stuff. And then be able to spend time around them and just share information of people who have spent more time in the industry, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then layer in number two, that's already rare, number one, right? Then number two, layer in the entertainment industry where that's even rarer, right? Then layer in number three, where a person's also Asian American and also has unique identity experiences in navigating that, right? And the ch unique challenges that come through that. So he has all three of those super rare things. So it's like some of the stories he tells and things like that. It's just like, I felt like I got like an accelerated crash course in terms of just understanding how to navigate. Like I thought I knew how to navigate things, you know? And then I'm seeing him, I'm like, whoa, there's like four or five more layers to think about. Oh shit. Wow. That is, um, you know? So, um, yeah, he's always big Kuya to me. Like, um, like, for real. So, uh, but yeah, so Calendaria tour with Mike Swift, man. So uh, this actually came from the same writer's camp uh, uh, with the butter thing. So like we had, uh, we had a spot in Long Beach and we, uh, um, we, we were just, 
chilling, you know, hanging out, you know, on the porch with cookies and all them. And then Mike was talking about, hey, like, we're going to do this tour and stuff. And like, I want you to come with me. And I was like, ah, cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people just say stuff, you know, you just vibing. Right. And then he looks at me. He's like, he's like, no, like, for real, like, you're going right. And I was like, I was like, don't say anything. You don't really mean, bro. You know, <laughs> so, like, like, that's my energy. Right. And But I could tell, like, I was looking in his eyes. He was like dead serious. He's like, bro, like, you're that guy that like we want to like work with, come out there and like. It, I couldn't have asked for a better way to like my first time out in the Philippines. Right. I couldn't have asked for a better way to be introduced to the country and like uh, be introduced to people and meet people. Um, so special. So uh, out there for th to answer your question out there for 36 days, I think it was like of the 36 days, it was 28 days of show. So it was a very wow. like wow. You know, something like that. Um more or less 26 more or less something like that my, my numbers might be a little off someone's gonna fact check me and be like bro this is <laughs> hella off. You know, like, it wasn't it felt like 26 days you know mm -hmm. yeah um but uh yeah we we did a lot of shows in manila we kind of went to uh uh like south north um barangay um tagig freaking meeting the mayors and shit like <laughs> street hoop shout out to boss g like there's man shout out to Otto. he was kind of helping kind of shoot everything rashid amazing artist like there's so many i'm like there's so many names i could just keep going on right and i think one of the things that's so special specifically about the country is that the people just have so much love for each other like i i, I really like that was an experience that I was like, I'm going to forever cherish. And I want to bring that energy everywhere I go. Cause like just the Filipino culture and just how beautiful it is. Um, uh, it's very special. So all that to say, the tour was amazing, bro. Like it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I could do, I could, I guess I could go on like specific stories and you know, like, I, yeah, I don't know. let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was, uh, um, I think one of the shows, uh, um, we went to uh, Cavite. And so Cavite, they have like kind of an underground, I don't, I don't want to say it's like under, it's kind of underground street. Like there's like a lot of like, um, <laughs> like the street fraternities, that term that's been kind of floating around <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, um, that, It's like that type of scene, right? Like you ever see uh, the music video uh, uh, 24s with TI, like where they have, um, they, basically they have an apartment complex in the background where they're rapping. Right. But it's like hella people just on every single layer, just kind of like kind of vibing out too. Right. Right. So we had that kind of setup where it's just like an apartment where it's like multiple porches, you know, and then um, we had like a makeshift basketball court. And then we had like a, um, a makeshift stage that we created literally just for like the people. Right. Wow. And it just felt, it was literally like performing at like a music video like everyone's just vibing out, having a good time, like turning a apartment complex into just a giant party, right? Wow. Um, and Is there footage of that? Like, they, uh, I'm sorry? Is there footage of that somewhere? Oh, uh, there's a lot of footage. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we could, we might even be able to overlay it a little bit over here. Cause like, it's like, like there's a, there's like a shot where you just see the whole crowd, just like it started empty, right? So yeah. like at first, like keep in mind, this is I think the third show or fourth show. So I'm like hella skeptical. I'm like, what the fuck we're we doing? Like just uh, <laughs> performing out like in front of like an apartment complex. And Mike's like, nah, trust right. me, bro. It's about to get lit, you know. So um, so we set up the stage and everything, and then you start seeing these people just start coming and start coming. By the time it's just like people, you know, mm. and people on the apartment complex and stuff. And they're just showing so much love. You can tell how much music means to them because it like really is like a source of like mental health for like a lot of these people. Right. So it's like, and just so much a source of like, like a lot of people don't have an opportunity to be seen or heard. Right. So like, this is their only opportunity to be seen and heard for a lot of them just through music. So like so much talent out there too. I was like blown away like just everyone freestyle and everyone rap. like they had a section where they wanted to um like play some uh beats and things like that and uh <laughs> uh 
Uh, okay, that, uh, there was... Uncensored, bro. Uncensored, bro. Give it to us. <laughs> I, see, I see how you're dancing around this thing. There was a, uh, I, I'm not going to name any names. This person will forever remain anonymous, right? So, Because I, I don't want to make anyone feel like that. Because this is an up-and-coming person, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like there was this time when we were like, hey, like we should do back-to-back. Like I'll play a beat, you play a beat, and we'll just let, let the people freestyle on it, you know? So that was like part of, part of the show. And like... Uh, like the guy played a beat and then you could tell the crowd was cool and people would just be like rapping on it. And then I would play an instrumental and like, you can see the crowd kind of like lift up a little bit. They're like, you know, you just see everyone just, and then you can start seeing, they're just going a little bit harder on the instrumentals. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh shit. It felt good. Right. So mm-hmm. I, just, I just wanted to see if my music translated out. I mean, I thought it would, but I, you know, you never know. You never want to be too cocky. Like you always want to, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, so he was, I was like, cool. And now it's the other DJ's turn. So he's like, Oh shit. So he plays his um, beat and then um, people are rocking with it. You know, it's cool, you know? And then, <laughs> and then, not really. And then I'm playing my, it's just like, you know, like, and then, different like too. this happened a few different times. Too. And then after a while, I was like, bro, like, this doesn't even feel like a collab. Like I feel, it almost felt like bullying, bro. So I was like, I was like, we can't, like, we cannot do this anymore. Cause it's like, cause like, I, I mean, he's a, he's a cool dude, you know? And I'm not trying to like, mm-hmm. you know, um, you so, on, but it was cool. Like, right? tell, you like, you like, um, we exchange information and like, um, I think it was really constructive. So, um, and also I've had more time to practice. I've been in his, his position before in the past too. Like I've been in situations where I'm still learning. Right. So like I've, I've been on the other side where, uh, uh I'm growing in terms of my skill set. So, um, so it, it I, I just had more time to practice at this point, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. so, so it was fun. <laughs> well, you know, maybe he just takes that as inspiration now it's drive for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, I mean, that's, um, it was experiences like that where, where, um, it really motivated me, you know, mm-hmm. except they were meaner to me. I was trying to show this guy love. <laughs> I, I, was younger. I was like, bro, like I'm even more motivated. So mm-hmm. maybe I should have been meaner to him, huh? You know, <laughs> him but, uh, but I always show love. I, I really want to make sure people like have fun too. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. How's the tour? Like, yeah, there's there's so many, and, and we we got a um, potential documentary coming out on that too. Um, I was gonna ask. I was like, when's the tour movie coming out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so that's in development. We're kind of waiting for some more footage to come back in. Um, and they actually built like a musical off of uh, the tour, bro. Like <laughs> like they. Okay, so I was supposed to fly out um, November sixth. And so the last seven days of the tour was just supposed to be my chill days. Like we just been performing, going everywhere. And then so I really didn't get a chance to really just hang out and see the city and stuff. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, man, that last week, I'm just going to uh, chill and relax. And all of a sudden we get booked for all these shows. So that week that I'm supposed to chill, like now it's just like performances. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was, I was willing to do it because it was also tied to fundraisers. We wanted to raise mm-hmm. money for like, and like kind of shine a light in terms of like local communities and things like that. Right. And really just kind of show love, bring food and, and that sort of thing. Um, but then while this was happening, I got like two phone calls and uh, one Mike was like, bro, like uh, something, something like they, they have heard the story of this tour and they want to build a musical off of it. And so one thing about Mike Swift is he kind of was sponsored by uh, Nippon Paint, one of the biggest paint companies out in um, the Philippines. And so through that, he created Nippon Gang with like a lot of amazing graffiti artists and like um, just ama- just artists, amazing artists. So we would go to each tour spot and we would show up and paint the walls and stuff. So like it would just kind of be random walls. But after we left each city, there'd be beautiful artwork just like in all the areas. So I think that story was just kind of circulating. And then these people were like, hey, we want to build a musical off of it. We have lighting, we have set designers, we have choreographers and, and all this stuff. And so that one was booked for November 15th. So I was actually supposed to extend to kind of join that. But then I, I couldn't, you know, and it was really bittersweet, too, because then I got a call from my distributor and then he was like, bro, Spotify Asia is in the Philippines in November. They want to meet you, too. And so we can kind of develop some things. And then like I was like, man, I, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I have other projects and like, you know, and, and all this stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still processing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's so much, you know.
So. Yeah, just going off that, like you're just saying, you're processing Spotify Asia, uh, a musical, a uh, documentary. Like, how how do you find the balance between creating your personal life, right? Because we all have personal things that happen to us. And at the same time, you're an entrepreneur as well. So you're building businesses and also maintaining them. Like, if you were to uh, explain to somebody, how do you balance all those things and stay fucking sane at the same time. <laughs> can you please uh, shed some light on that, please? Because I know you're, yeah, you, I can just tell sometimes that you're just so like, like, uh, I think I asked you one time, like, hey, do you ever get overwhelmed? You looked at me in my face and you said, uh, I don't have time to be, be overwhelmed. It's <laughs> like a luxury, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, so, so how do you, how do you balance? Um, so I actually learned this from Mike because, um, because I was doing all these things, but I, I would find myself like, I, I, okay. Number one, I give myself one day a week always where I just do nothing. I literally like as hard as I work the other days of the week, I literally like if, if a person just shot was only got to hang out with me, like that one day a week, every week, they'd be like, this motherfucker's the laziest guy in the world. I do nothing. Right. They, they would think I'm like the laziest ever right um outside of that though like when i am working um i actually got this advice from mike because like mike's one of these guys where he's constantly on the go he's just constant 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 and i was like whoa how is he doing this and so um we were we were writing i think like when he had come out to brooklyn where we had done a block party we were uh uh shout out to rotten island records by the way like amazing record store like um, go check them out. Like they have amazing, amazing records um, based out in uh, New York. If if anyone is visiting, check them out. <laughs> um, right. Also owned by Iron Solomon, like amazing uh, freestyle battle rapper for anyone who like uh, was in that scene. Like I think uh, like when it was, I think like I'm getting my years messed up, but like 2010, I think around around mm -hmm. that time. But Iron Solomon, amazing freestyle um, battle rapper. Um, anyway, so I'm riding in the back of the uh, car with uh, Mike Swift and, and I'm just like, uh, and this was one of the first times I had met him, right? So like we hadn't really developed a relationship like that yet. So I was like, hey, could I ask you a question? And I was like, I noticed like you're constantly on the go, constantly moving. Like, how do you find time to rest? And then he's like, my work is my rest, you know? Mm. And I was like, yeah, so you, you caught on to it quicker than me. At first, I was like, what the fuck is this man? In my head, I was like, what the fuck is this man talking about? Like, you know, so I had to think about it. But I was like, but he said it so confidently. So I was like, man, he really means something about it. I've seen what he did, right? So I was like, I don't get it, but like, I'm going to have to like think about this, right? Yeah. And, and the more I thought about it, at least to me, how I interpret it was when I, when I love what I do and I love what I invest my time into, my work is my rest. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, Every single, like for us, we have to make music, content, all this stuff as content creators, right? But then we get tired from making content. So how do we create con? Like, so for us, if we choose to do things that we love already and then just build content around it, yeah. it's naturally sustainable because like, our work becomes our vacation. So it, it was um, really cool to hear that. And then when going on tour with Mike, witnessing it, you know? um like on a 28 day schedule you know and you're like oh i see so um so yeah i've, I've embodied that so I, I try to just plug in with the process and also listen to myself too right when i'm tired i'm tired like and i and i and i do need to take a break especially as like you know like we're all getting older and things like that and, and we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're here not to run a sprint this is like literally a marathon right yeah. and so and my job as a, a content creator or musician is to be consistent for the people, right? I want, I don't want to just be that friend that shows up just every once in a while and then just disappears for like six months. And then at my convenience, when I need something, what's up, bro? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to be that guy, right? I want to, I want to show and I want to prove to people that, hey, I'm here to show up. Like, I, I called you my homie. I called you my brother. I called you my sister. Like, I'm showing up consistently and and that's what i want to do so that's the only way for me to be sustainable with that so that is a good one it reminds me now of uh when i do my zoom calls with my therapist fine in the back rest is productive 
And it's important to just remember that like rest is part of the process. You know, you, you have to get rest in order to be productive. Therefore it is productive. And I am the same way. I need one day where I don't actually tune into anything at all and just (laughs) stare at a screen or the ceiling or, you know, just chill out and not, not do a thing. And that means just as much as all the work that you do the rest of the week. That's fine. I, I love that. And I it mean, gives us let, also time to process the time. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know, just going off of the uh, the rest and the day where you're just like a sloth or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what are some steps? <laughs> yeah. aside, so aside from work and, you know, everything that you're balancing, let's talk about that. That one day that, you know, mm-hmm. what do you enjoy to do outside of work? I know uh, work, you enjoy work, but like what else? You know what I'm saying? You know what's funny is um, <laughs> I like because I spend like a lot of the t- week thinking. I like to not think, so like literally <laughs> just like that's why I literally say like if people see me that one day, they're like this motherfucker is a bum, bro. Like, this guy, like, <laughs> like literally, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I'll do that, and then like if I do have a little bit of energy, what I do? <laughs> if <laughs> I'll do that, if. If um, I like to research, bro, like um, I think one of the I think one of the things that's really cool about life is that if we learn skills, like we can do something today that we couldn't do yesterday. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That thing that was confusing or very intimidating to me yesterday. If I put a little bit of time to just kind of teach myself something, all of a sudden it's a little bit easier the next day. And then like in a month, all of a sudden it's just kind of a habit. And I don't even think about it, it just naturally occurs in life, you know, so. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I like to do. Like, I just fell in love with the process of just getting better. Like my, my whole motto is like, um, like my, my motto when I was younger was like, do a good job. Right. Yeah. But then I found myself getting very like depressed. Cause like half the time I wouldn't be doing a good job, bro. My music <laughs> in the beginning was horrible, bro. Like I'd be like, <laughs> I was like, I'd be like, bro, Hey, uh, you want to like listen to some of my music, bro. And they're like, again, bro. Like, bro, like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So like, you know, my motto is like, do a good job I'm, every single day. I'm not doing a good job. Right. So, <laughs> so I was like, fuck. So I was like, how can this be sustainable? And then I changed my motto to just like, like, just keep learning, keep learning. And um, I found that to be more sustainable and more rewarding, you know, because I'm also kinder to myself because, again, the process, a lot of the time, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be like <laughs> anything that looks like good to other people they're like this motherfucker hasn't figured his life out like what the <laughs> fuck like you know what i'm saying like bro, like when i was younger like it was all this bullshit happening you know and, and yeah, we've talked yeah. about this off camera too you know <laughs> so it's like right. yeah so um yeah but go ahead. i wanted to comment on something that's kind of funny that you said oh yeah this guy's a bum right because uh there's a story that i always tell people and that that's uh there's a picture of you and i and we're on a we're on a uh subway i think it was the first time i ever came to new york and it, and people uh, thought I was, uh, yeah yeah and people thought I was talking to a homeless man right uh, <laughs> and after, and after, that was my day off <laughs> that was that day right there that yo day. yo thank right? you thank you Jay's homies for fact checking this I got it the just cosign, happened you know, that, you know what I'm know, saying like, it just happened that you were holding like a cup too and shit but anyway uh, uh, this is getting somewhere this is going somewhere this is going somewhere oh, okay right yo. so the whole the whole bum thing is like but you're actually so far from that right when I first met you you were like mm-hmm. almost the complete opposite very hair put together fucking you came in like a um a very uh, uh like a blue lamborghini that only like a hundred people had you know what i'm saying and but you were still mm-hmm. humble at that point right at least to me you were and then mm-hmm. later on you kind of kind of switched up your image a little bit and you kind of mentioned that like you didn't like the way people treated you do you want to talk about that a little bit yeah, and why, yeah for sure. and why you transitioned from from that to this and then and also another bonus question was there is there any time that you kind of lost yourself into the glitz and glamour bro uh, bro you're asking like the like yes these are the questions so yeah um <laughs> okay so when i was uh so i'll kind of hit them like one by one so yeah i think when i was younger i would because of certain things that were developing, I would kind of get invited into certain circles where everyone was a little bit older than me. And I think they Mm. honestly, like, they kind of would like look, 
I don't, it was like an unspoken thing, right? I, I feel like just because I was younger, they kind of like looked down on me or not uh, include me into certain deals because, you know, like the, the stereotype is like a younger person is less competent and things like, and in a lot of ways, yes, right? Because it's like, I lack experience in certain things. I'm probably a little bit less mature in a lot of things. So like, I, I understand where that comes from, right? Because I'm still a developing person. But I think I wanted to be included at those tables. I wanted to be, I, hey bro, like, I've achieved some success and I could bring this to the table too when we like collaborate on stuff. So yeah, hence the flashiness and like, like all that stuff. Right. Cause, mm-hmm. cause I wanted to like, for me, it was a networking tool. It was a networking tool for me to get my foot into the door to be like, Oh, this guy kind of blah, blah, blah. I'd get introduced to people. So like during that time period, it, it worked really well in that sense. Cause it was, I saw it as an, as an investment, right? A lot of people right. are like, bro, you spent all this money on a car. You should get like, um, more properties or whatever, right? I literally did it to, for, as a networking tool, um, and it was a great investment. <laughs> in that yeah. Sense. So, um, now the issue here was that I got tired of it because it also, again, we're talking about the clout chasing energy, right? Like it's going right. to bring in the people who don't necessarily love me. They just love the power that is associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, like, when I'm up and I have that leverage, everyone loves me, right? But it was very hard to tell um, who really had, like, real love. You get what I'm saying? Like, when I had nothing going for me, there's no reason for anyone to be hanging out with me, bro. Like, (laughs) like, literally (laughs) zero reason, right? So if you're standing next to me, I'm I'm Bro, that's the homie, homie. Like, I know for a fact, because, bro, I got nothing. If anything, I'm like the annoying guy who's always asking for stuff. Bro, people were giving me socks, shirts. Like, I was, <laughs> yeah. like, crashing home to home, bro. Like, I was, man. So, like, yeah. I, like those people forever, I'm always thankful for, you know? And, like, bro, like, they would invite me over. Uh, like, I would literally be thinking hour to hour about, like, hey, what, what to eat next and things like that, right? So um, they're like, bro, just uh, come join us when we go to Olive Garden because they have the unlimited breadsticks and salad. Like, we'll order it and we'll just pass it to you. So yeah. <laughs> I'll just be like, yeah. drink, like water and shit. And like, yeah. I was like, these are the homies, you know? And like, thank you for, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, shout out to all the people giving me rides. Like, so many people, right? So right. those were the real ones. But then as soon as, like, all that stuff happened, it was like, um, I, I, like most people were just kind of, interacting to get an opportunity or things like that. And I got really tired of that energy. Like, it, mm. and you, it's a feeling like I'm a big believer that people's souls are very intelligent. Like people can like, you know, that gut feeling you have when you're kind of interacting with the world and you know, something's a little bit off. That's like the soul speaking, you know, like I feel like it's right. very intelligent. It can, it can tell, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So um, yeah. So after that, I was just like, I'm going to just, Actually, I think I took it too extreme. I was just acting like I had <laughs> going on in my life and just, I, I just wanted, it was like a, it was like a, a mental, it was like a mental test. It, it was kind of like, I like, I love experimenting in life and just kind of, if we change how we present ourselves or change things, just how does it change the energy around us? Yeah. So I think I went a little bit too extreme, you know, but <laughs> I, I really wanted to see like, and maybe it was nostalgia, bro. Like maybe I missed like, feeling like <laughs> i had nothing and people just showing by know, the way me. like when i say but like you i mean you still fly bro don't get me wrong don't get me don't get <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I know I'll what find, you're saying i'll find the picture <laughs> i'll find the picture i still have it on my phone so uh, don't get it fucked up where the dude's dirty or nothing like that dude was still yeah, flying yeah, yeah. just like it was just from like just say like day and night type of shit you know what i'm saying yeah, 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 a thousand, big drift big big yeah, shift so, i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> a thousand percent so but now, now, like, I, I, I understand that there's kind of like, um, there's moments where we do want to show what we bring to the table, but there's also moments where we don't need to, like, we kind of want to, like, we get an honest read of the table, like, when we kind of just show, like, we just, we just act like, hey, it's just like another person at the table, and you really get yeah. to kind of see, because everyone's going to, like, 90% of people are going to be nice to you if they think, like, you have an opportunity to help, right? Like, yeah. that's just like, <laughs> that's just like human nature. And I'm never mad at people for that. That's just um, normal. Like we all want safety. We want all want stability. That's just human nature. Right. At the same time, like I also just want to understand if people can like vibe, you know, like yeah, organically, you know, mm-hmm. and it was also a test for myself too. Cause it's like, 
am I just connecting with people now as a crutch because of everything around me? Like, do I still have the, cause you know, like when we have nothing, the only way we get people to like us to make them laugh or make them feel good. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's all I got. Like I can just yeah. make you laugh. You know, that's the best I can do. You know, right. I can't pay you back. So can I make you laugh? You know, like, <laughs> um, so, uh, that, that was, um, kind of a self test, too. you know, now, now a, more that. yeah. And just uh, one more question that was in there was just like, did you ever get lost in that glitz and glamor in the sense where like, you lost this humbleness that you've always had type of thing for a little while. You know, some people, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I, I think I did. <laughs> did, so, did <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, like, I, I think, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and, and I think that's, but I think what was really good is like I had people around me who kind of checked me. I think go. also, mm -hmm. um, and that's when I was like, I always had thought I was pretty self-aware, you know, in certain things. But then I also know that we have blind spots, you know, and, pe and I'm so mm -hmm. thankful for that. Like, that's what I really appreciate about just any circle, just like just keeping it real. And like, yeah, that's, that's why I think like a little bit of healthy bullying and like friend circles. Is <laughs> good, you know? it's like, it's like, here's the thing, like, I'd rather get called out by the homie and they're ragging mm -hmm. on me, but they're doing it out of love. Then that random motherfucker out there who doesn't give a fuck about me is genuinely trying to come from my neck. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So like the homie's actually looking out for me, like if he does it in like a non-toxic way, right? So right. like mm -hmm. just, he's still doing like the right tone or whatever, right? Because then that's actually making the circle stronger. Now, right. now we're kind of tightening up as a unit. So now when we go out there, like people really don't have too much to say about the circle as much, you know? Yeah. So um, everyone can always find something, but like you know, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I know it's getting a little late over there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you 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 wake up very very early. Uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, we're all tagging seven seven seven. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. You want to just take the range from here and just kind of explain what that is, what's coming with it, what is the significance of that? Uh, you know, everything that kind of uh, revolves around that the significance of seven seven seven. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So 777 is kind of like a group of like creative people, a group of creative um, business people. Just anyone who just is passionate about creating or we're creating like a, a collective, right? Where it's, um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in community. Um, Cookies and I were actually talking about like this ideology of gotuism, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, sometimes in the West is so individualistic. It's kind of like, it's me, 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 fuck, fuck them all. Take, take, take me, 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 like that type of energy. And like, it's very isolating. And that's actually very capital. That's very, uh, after effects of the capitalistic, um, like philosophy, because people in power, they want to divide people so they can maintain power. So they're just like, Hey, we're just going to, uh, give you assets, whatever, but like, fuck everyone else. And but then they just remain in power because of that, right? Because no one really unifies, right? So this whole idea of gotchuism is like, yo, like they can they can do that over here. Got you, bro. You know, yeah. you need this. Got you. So yeah. gotchuism. So, but the <laughs> like only that. way for this to work is we also have to be self sustaining too. Like we have to know how we have to earn the privilege to give. Because like, if I need three sandwiches each day to survive, and I only have two sandwiches. I shouldn't give this one away to someone like get my third sandwich first, bro. Like I need to, I need to get that. Put yourself up to you can get, or just be a little bit patient, bro. You know, like, yeah. you, you know, and then now, now the fourth sandwich can be given. Right. All so right. that's the whole idea of gotchuism. Like when we're up, like we can kind of like help each other a little bit, you know, and there's been times when we're down and then like, you know, like there's been times when I'm down and like people have like helped me, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's the whole idea of uh, the, the ideology of seven, seven, seven. So Ooh. it's like, it's like there's a guy out there who's amazing at marketing, right? And he has an excess of marketing knowledge, right? Sharing that with us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a, yeah. another person out there who has an excess of um, kind of mental health information, right? right. got you. I'm going to share this information with you. So it's like it's not just resources. It's information and time and that sort of thing. So it's, um, it's not a formalized business yet. There's actually something I'm building that um, it's in the process of being tested, right? So I'm never going to overpromise anything. But like, um, but that's in development too to catch up to this. But like, at least seven. It's it's basically a family, bro. Like, cool. you know. 
So like we got we got um some amazing talent, you know, in the seven 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 family. I, you know uh, what I mean? So <laughs> you get what I'm saying? We, we got we got amazing content, you know, we got Ruby also. So it's like essentially seven seven seven, you get what I'm saying? Yes. So it's like we, we have so much amazing content that's just getting built. Like, I, I mean, by the time this comes out, like there's probably other content coming in. Like we have the, we have the video producer at uh, New York times, like J bang, he's, he's helping create stuff. Right. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. Like we have the guy mm -hmm. who's doing like Obama suits rich, like he's willing to like help with like merch and like create things together. He, that's like a world talent. Who's just like, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, it's like this collective of people who really just care about each other and also do things at a high level. That's like, that's seven, 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 you know? Oh, I love it. I mm. love it. Uh, any, <laughs> <laughs> any, um, <laughs> any, and we always like to close off and just say like, is there any advice you would give someone that is uh, coming up that uh, maybe wants to be a producer, maybe wants to be an artist, maybe just wants to do something in the music industry, engineer, even just maybe uh, graphic designing, any advice that you would give him or her? Yeah, a thousand percent. I feel like for a person to have longevity in this industry, number one, give yourself a reason why you're doing it and make it bigger than yourself. Because the thing is, is that there's going to be so many hurdles you're going to have to jump through. You're going to have so many people saying, hey, like, it's not realistic. Hey, it's not possible, you know, and like, this, it can be very draining. So like you have to give yourself that energy of just believing in yourself constantly. Like, so give yourself a reason why you're doing it. Like for me, it was, <clears throat> I, uh, I learned this term recently. I was a high risk child where like, I, I could have like injured myself a lot, like uh, self harm. Right. Like I, I was like one of those kind of accident kids, prone. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> or I, I, no, no, not accident prone. I was like a, a self harming, like, oh, you know, shit. like, okay. like, like that kind of, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I guess it, it could be an accident, yeah. you know, but like, uh, but yeah, so like, you know, like these thoughts would kind of go through my mind a lot when I was younger. And yeah. at this time, I didn't really have, um, I, I, no one, um, especially in like our neighborhood and like our, our like uh, upbringing, we weren't exposed to ideas of like therapy and, and, you know, mental health. Like I had no idea. So the, yeah. the next closest thing was like music for me, you know, so yeah. that's kind of what kept me from like. Uh, maybe, maybe like going too crazy. Like there, there's a yeah. lot of people like around me who aren't here or like they kind of mentally aren't here anymore, you know? And, and I think mm -hmm. one of the things that kind of kept me grounded was that, and that stuck with me. And I was like, man, like there's at least one or two people out there who are going through the same thing that I went through before in the past. So that's what keeps me motivated for music. Cause like when I go through bullshit, like there's a lot of days where I was like, I have to be on a phone call with this. And then right after, and then I got to do this. And then I was like, man, like, I don't want to do it. And I, I travel back in time to that moment. And yeah. I think about it. I'm like that, whoever that kid is out there, who's just kind of waiting for that. Um, they're out there somewhere. So like, for me, it's like less, like, again, it's not about the, class. I just want to have an impact or one or two. And if it's more than that, that's, I, I feel like I did my job. Right. So that's my number one thing. Like have a reason um, why you're doing it, you know, yeah. uh, cause that will become sustainable. Cause if we do it just for like self glorification and stuff like that, if you're going to get tired, like after a while, it gets kind of like, yeah, you know, like um, uh, old uh, after a while, you know, uh, but it feels nice. Hey, like, yeah. Hey, we got to feel ourselves. We got to like be amazing. Like we're always amazing. Right. Like, but at the same time, like we can also add another layer. Right. Yeah. And then number two is mm -hmm. um, just love the process more than the clout. Like, just fall in love with it. Like, don't think about the Grammys. Don't think about the accolades. Don't think about, like, being in front of, like, the millions of people in front of the crowd. Like, focus on being good at performing. What Falling in love with the process of performing. Falling in love with the process of songwriting, producing, how to network, how to market like just love everything about it everything will come naturally after that yeah those are my two things that's powerful man yeah. those are great <laughs> yeah so <laughs> all right i mean we'll just with that man uh we'll just end it right there uh man uh 
So that, it, it just had me, uh, the mental health part really kind of hit a little bit. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I lost my train of thought a little bit. But hey, man, I, I like yeah. to thank everybody for tuning in, man. This is the Pure Push Podcast. I go by the name of Young Jay. We got the lovely Ruby Renegade. And our very special guest, Pizza Palace. Thank you guys so hey. much for uh, having me today. For sure. Thanks. For sure. All right. <laughs> Pressure.